This is a 2019 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. But while you can go down to your local Mercedes-Benz dealership and buy a brand new Sprinter with prices starting from just $35,000, this one is more expensive. Six times more expensive, in fact. This is a brand new Sprinter with a price of just under $200,000. And today, I'm going to show you why. I've borrowed this Sprinter from CNC Motors, which is an exotic car dealership here in Southern California that has everything. And I mean everything from exotic cars to luxury cars to muscle cars. And while I usually review exotic sports cars from CNC, they also have interesting stuff like this. They also have one of the craziest showrooms of any car dealer in the entire world. You can check them out by clicking the link in the description below. So let's go through a little overview of this Sprinter. Now this started life as a normal 2019 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter passenger van, which is Mercedes full-size van. But then things changed. It was heavily customized into an executive custom van with all sorts of interesting features and luxury and technology added to it for executives or parties or anyone else who wants to be chauffeured in a van and who appreciates the finer things in life. Now, underneath, this is just a regular Sprinter passenger van, a brand new Sprinter 2500 with a 170 inch wheelbase and a three liter turbo diesel V6 with 190 horsepower and about 330 pound feet of torque. But it's what's on the inside that counts. So today I'm going to take you on a tour of this Sprinter and I'm going to show you all of the quirks and features of a $200,000 custom van. Then I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the Sprinter, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also compiled a list of the coolest 1980s and 1990s vans currently listed for sale on Autotrader. All right, I'm obviously going to start the quirks and features of the Sprinter in back, and I want to talk about this van's primary purpose, which appears to be excess. Allow me to explain. Your car probably has a back seat. This has eight individual seats back here. Your car maybe has some rear controls for the stereo system. This vehicle has four different remote controls for all the systems in back. It also has four different screens back here, which isn't something you typically expect to find in a normal car. And then there's the cup holders. Many vans brag about how they have one cup holder for every seat, or maybe even two. There are 25 different cup holders in the back of this Sprinter, I counted. And some of those cup holders are in use because this Sprinter comes with 13 individual drink carriers. You have four different wine glasses, you have four different tumblers, and then you have five separate champagne flutes, which makes 13 all included inside your expensive executive Sprinter conversion. But in terms of excess, the most insane thing by far is the air conditioning system. Now here in Southern California, these vans are commonly used to drive like celebrities or parties to Las Vegas. And obviously it gets very hot on that drive and when you're in Vegas. So this van has a 65,000 BTU air conditioner system. Now, I didn't know what that was. So I Googled, you know, what size house should you have 65,000 BTUs in? And the answer is a 3,000 square foot house. <laughs> or you just have it in your Sprinter. Now, when you put this thing on full blast, you get cold within three minutes. The dealership told me that when you're driving through the desert or to Las Vegas in this van and it's 125 degrees outside, the air conditioner is designed to be able to keep it 65 degrees in here with no problem at all. And based on my experience turning it on today, that seems to be true. But anyway, let's start going through some of this stuff in a little bit more detail. Now, I mentioned there are four different screens in this interior. Well, one of them 
is right here. This is the primary screen that controls a lot of the systems inside this van. But of all the things it controls, probably my favorite is the partition. All right, let's say you're being chauffeured along in this van and you decide with your friends to maybe do something not quite so legal back here. Now, obviously you don't want the driver to know what you're doing. So you go into the screen to this little icon that says partition up, you press it and then the partition rises up between the driver and the passenger compartment. So the driver can't hear you, can't see you, and basically has no idea what you're choosing to do in the back of the van. Of course, if you decide on some activities that don't quite need as much privacy, you can always put the partition down, for instance, to direct the driver, then you can put it right back up again if you desire. Now, another controllable item you will see on this screen is something called star lights. You're thinking, well, what is that? Well, if you look up, you can see that the headliner is like stars. It's like a dark sky with stars in it. Now, this is a feature that Rolls-Royce has offered in its vehicles for quite a while, but it is also included in this van and you can use the screen to turn on the star lights. But things get far, far better than Rolls-Royce from there. That's because the star lights come with their own individual remote control that has 28 separate buttons on the remote. I am not making this up. You look at the remote and you can see you have all sorts of choices. You can turn the amount of color up or down. You can turn them off or on, adjust the brightness. You can even turn on the motor. And if you do that, then the star lights kind of cycle through various different lighting colors at their choosing. So it's not just a regular starlight ambiance, but instead it's kind of like a little light display in the star light headliner thanks to your 28 button starlight remote control. And speaking of lighting on the ceiling, it's worth noting that this particular van has 10 recessed lights in the ceiling, which is more than my living room. <laughs> but that's what you get when you spend 200 Gs on a van. Now, obviously throughout this video, you've seen the various ambient lights around me, and that is yet another lighting item that you can choose and configure. It has its own little setting inside the screen and you can pick from 10 different colors that you want the light to be, or you can turn on light show and it will cycle through the lights. And there are actually four different levels of light show that will cycle through the lights fast or slow, depending on what you want. Now, one of my favorite quirks about this is that one of the 10 colors you can select is black, which isn't a typical light color that you would expect. But uh, when you pay $200,000 for a van, I guess, they can make black lights. Now you can also see there is a button down here that says music show. And I think that might coordinate your music and your lights. And then they blink when there's beats. I'm not really sure, but that's what it would seem like to me. And you can press that button if you hook up music to the inside of your van. Now, next up, another interesting item with that screen, you can see it has a button that says Apple TV. And indeed, this van has two giant TV screens, one in the front, one in the back, and you can watch TV. But instead of watching regular old boring TV, you can even put on a YouTube video if you'd like. Uh, sorry, sorry, wait a minute, I actually meant a good YouTube video. Here you go. Anyway, I mentioned there are four separate remote controls back here. I already showed you one of them is for the Starlights, two more are for the TVs. One turns on the TVs and then the other one controls the Apple TV. The fourth remote, I don't know. <laughs> I think the sound system, but uh, not really sure, it looks like just a generic remote. Maybe they're just throwing remotes in this thing. But it's worth noting there are actually more remotes than that, technically, because this van also includes a PlayStation 4. You can see it's mounted against the back, and that also serves as a Blu-ray player. But if you wanna play PlayStation in your van while you're being driven down the street, you can, and there are PlayStation 4 controllers underneath the seats that allow you to do that. When they're in their natural spot under the seats, they're charging, or you can take them out and actually play with them while you're driving around. And it gets more ridiculous than that. If you're wondering why they only went with three rows of seats in here instead of four, which they clearly could have fit, that's because all of these chairs in this area 
they fold out to become recliners. And then while you're driving down the road, you can just have your feet sticking up and you can sit here relaxing, watching my YouTube videos, drinking from your champagne if that's what you wanna do. But if a recliner doesn't interest you, then you might be surprised to learn that the far back seat, the bench back there, can be transformed into a bed. If you pull out the headrest in the far back seat and then press this little button on the side, the back seat will actually fold completely flat and then it's a bed. Now, owing to the dimensions of this vehicle, it's not a tremendously wide bed, but you could kind of curl up on there or you could use it as a dog bed or a bed for a child or something like that while you're driving down the street. Although I suspect that's not particularly safe. And we're not done with the seating in this van just yet because these chairs right here are absolutely the place to be. Now, all of the chairs in this area here will extend out their footrests so you can sit in that reclining position. But these two chairs in this spot right here will also recline back so you can actually lie back and sort of relax while you're being driven around. And they have a massage button. You turn it on and the massaging seats come on and they have a heated seat button so you can turn that on and have the heated seats come on as as well while you're playing PlayStation in the back of your van. One other benefit of the seats in this van is the fact that the leather is very, very soft. Not crappy hard leather like you get in some luxury cars, but just wonderfully soft, comfortable, luxurious leather like you would expect from a high-end van, I guess. Now, more interesting items in the back. One is the fact that I can stand up back here. I'm six foot four, and I mentioned that to give you a frame of reference, I can completely stand up. My head does just touch the ceiling, but if you're six foot tall, six one, six two, you would have no problem fully standing up in the back of this thing, which is not something you can say about basically any other van. Now, next up, I want to move back to the cups and drinks situation in this van. And specifically, I want to talk about the fact that in this kind of bar area next to the champagne flutes, you also have an ice tray. So you can put a bottle of champagne on ice. And some of the cup holders in this van are actually not regular cup holders, but champagne bottle holders. <laughs> so that you can transport your bottle and pour it into your champagne flute and store it here and have a separate cup here. And you, there's just no end to the drink storage in this vehicle so you can have a nice time while you're being driven down the road. Another interesting item in this van is the fact that there are rear ports everywhere for charging stuff. I counted seven different USB ports back here if you wanna charge your various devices. There's also two household style electrical outlets back here. So theoretically you could plug in like surge protector and get dozens more charge ports if you want. And there's even an HDMI port. So if you don't want to play PlayStation 4, you want a different video game system, plug it in there and then you can play whatever you want to your heart's content. It never ends back here. One other interesting item in this van is the windows. Now the windows don't open and they are heavily, heavily tinted. That's to keep the heat out and also to give you some privacy since if you're in this thing, you're probably a celebrity or an executive of some variety. One cool thing I like about the windows, they have these curtains and they're the type of curtain that stay exactly where you place them. So you can put them at exactly the spot you want and they will stay put as you're being driven down the road. Now, one interesting item with the windows in this van, there is an emergency exit window. So so if your driver tries to kidnap you and you can't figure out how to get out and you're scared and you're some rich executive and he's going to take you somewhere and hold you for ransom, you can get out the emergency exit window. Of course, you can also use that window, you know, if, if the door breaks or something. And the interesting quirks and features of the van continue up front. Specifically up front, you will find a second screen that mirrors that screen you have in back. And you can use these front controls and switches to override what's going on in back. So if you're driving this thing as like a party bus and the people in back are getting a little too rowdy, you can override like how loud they've turned the volume or that kind of thing. One interesting secret of this van is that if you reach behind the seat, you can also find this little wire which has a switch on top of it. That switch will kill the power to all of these cool auxiliary van luxury systems. So if you're really fed up with your passengers and you're driving along, you can flip that switch 
and then everything turns off and nobody can have any fun anymore. Now, another interesting item up here is the fact that the starry light headliner continues into the front passenger compartment of the van. So even though it's obviously designed for the rear passengers to enjoy, they're the ones spending the money, the driver also gets to see some nice starry light colors and that will enhance the experience a little bit. Unfortunately, the driver will need a lot more than that starry headliner to enhance the driving experience because this is a pretty stripped down version of the Sprinter. You can see that the moment you look at the steering wheel, over on the right side, there is a blank pad where controls would be for the infotainment system. There's also a row of blank switches behind the steering wheel to the right, and in the middle, there are more blank switches than actual useful switches in the center control stack. More than that, also in the middle, you have this plastic parking brake, and this has to be the cheapest, crappiest parking brake you will ever see on a $200,000 vehicle. You can clearly tell, if you spend some time in here, that all of the money was spent in the back. Now, two interesting placements of things in this van. One is the fuel door, which is strangely placed on the driver's side directly behind the driver's front door. And if you open the driver's door, then you can gain access to the fuel door. That may seem like an odd spot, and it is, but the reason they put it there is because they sell versions of the Sprinter that you can make into like pickup trucks or ambulances, and that would require like moving the fuel door and fuel tank every time you customize the Sprinter into a different body style. But by putting the fuel door right by the driver's door, that part of the van won't change no matter how you customize the rear of the van, and so it's always there. Unfortunately, it makes gas stations rather difficult because basically you have to get out with the pump right next to you in order to fill up and your door doesn't always have clearance. Not the best placement, but it's what they had to do. Now, another interesting placement in this van is the backup camera, which is in the rear view mirror. So when you're backing up this massive van, all you have is this tiny little camera mounted in the rear view mirror. But at least it's relatively high resolution and at least it has a backup camera, which is absolutely essential because there's a TV where the back window is, and so this van doesn't really have any rear window. And of course, if the partition is up, you can't even see that far back. So you absolutely need a camera if you wanna to try to maneuver this thing. Now, next up, you might be wondering, given all that stuff that's inside this van, exactly what is in the back? I was certainly wondering, and the answer is, you open it up and you find that, well, really not much is back here. There is so much stuff in the passenger compartment that they basically bring it almost all the way to the end of the van. So back here you have sort of the back of that TV that's facing the passenger compartment. With that said, there are a couple of interesting things back here, namely the fact that there is a little bit of storage back here underneath this area in back and between the back of the TV and the doors. There's about six, eight inches where you can put stuff if you absolutely have to get more storage in your van. Now, one thing I love back here is that there is a latch to get out if you get stuck in this compartment. Can you imagine what a nightmare it would be if you got stuck in this windowless compartment that's only six inches wide? That is kind of a rather scary thought. Now, one other thing I've always liked about the Sprinter, if you close the door, you can see the Mercedes-Benz logo does not close with the door. Instead, it only closes with the outer door, so you always know which door to close first, because that's the one that doesn't have the Mercedes-Benz logo on it. I think that is a nifty little solution, and it keeps the Mercedes-Benz logo right in the middle when people are behind you. And finally, we move under the hood of the giant Sprinter. You got 10 leather seats, 25 cup holders, four screens, all that massive space, and it's powered by a 190 horsepower diesel V6. Now granted, it has 330 pound-feet of torque, but still, I suspect this thing won't be winning any awards for its performance. And so those are the quirks and features of the Sprinter. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the giant Sprinter. And you can see the colors are going behind me. They're in mix mode, which means that the bottom and the top can be a little bit different as they cycle through. Uh, the first impression you get when you drive in this thing is that it's massive, which of course it is. It really feels like an RV because you're really far forward. So there's you're basically at the front of the vehicle. 
and it's just huge and it has the driving dynamics of an RV and the seating position of an RV and some would argue that's because it, it is an RV. I mean, they use these frequently as kind of the base car for a lot of RV, you know, weekend van type projects. Wow, surprisingly a little bit quicker than I was expecting. I figured it'd be really, really slow and it's slow, but it's not really, really slow. It's better than I thought it would be. It's enough that, I mean, you're not looking for a performance experience from this vehicle. It's enough that you just drive it and do whatever you need to carry people around and back. There's nothing that is going on up here that's really particularly exciting or interesting. You do have a very tall driving position, which is nice and useful. And now, <laughs> the funny thing is the driver can control that too. So not just the backseat passengers, if they want to keep the driver out, but if the driver just gets annoyed, the driver will be like, see ya, I'm done with you. Truthfully, this drives like a big van. You got a big van seating position. Honestly, what it feels like, I've driven a bunch of cargo vans over the years and it feels pretty similar to that, frankly. And then you look in the back and there's crazy leather seats and colors changing and all that stuff. But mostly, it just feels like a big van. You feel like a, a, a retired guy on a road trip and you're headed to the next RV park in the next town and you're gonna stay there a few days and have some nice meals and meet some nice folks. And so that's a ridiculously customized Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. If you want a luxury vehicle, well, this is a luxury vehicle. You can pretty much customize these things however you want. Now, I don't normally review vehicles like this, but I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to see what you get when you spend 200 grand for a van. <laughs> and now it's time to give the custom Sprinter a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, it's a van. It looks like a van. It's not attractive. It's not hideous either, but it's not doing better than a 2 out of 10. Acceleration is weak and it gets a 1 out of 10. Handling is vague, slow, loose, all the bad stuff, but not dangerous and it gets a 2 out of 10. Fun factor is low for the driver, but high for those in back, so we'll split the difference and give it a 5 out of 10. Cool factor, same deal. These high cost sprinters aren't exactly exotic cars in terms of coolness, but they are kind of neat and it gets a 5 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 15 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. The Sprinter is loaded with stuff, though it's missing a lot of typical driving features like forward collision alert and such, and it gets an 8 out of 10. Comfort is fine up front, amazing in back, and it gets a 9 out of 10. Quality, same deal. Everything is really nice in back, but mediocre up front, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is high. You can transport a lot of people in style, and it deserves a high score, but this is very difficult to maneuver, huge, and it won't fit in most parking garages, and that drops it down to a 9 out of 10. Finally, value. This thing is loaded, but it's also insane money and it's hard to justify. It gets a 5 out of 10 for a total daily score of 38 out of 50. Add it up and the Doug score is 53 out of 100. I've never reviewed any other big vans, so here it is against some other crazy cars I've reviewed. Apparently, it beats out the Countach. Well then, that's something, I guess.